Physics is a very quantitative science, so we're always trying to find ways of describing things with numbers. So there's one type of quantity that, that only needs one number to describe it. So, so say I'm standing here, and I tell you that my mass is 80 kilograms, right? My mass is 80, well, maybe I'll write out mass. Mass equals 80 kilograms. 80 kilograms. So assuming you know what a kilogram is, I don't need to give you any more numbers for you to know what my mass is, right? This is really all there is to know. Another example of a quantity like this is my temperature. Maybe my temperature, say temp, my temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. Right, so assuming you know this unit, that it's what a degree Celsius means, I only need to give you one number to fully describe what I'm talking about. Right? So quantities like this are called scalar quantities. Scalars. And, and the, the key thing about a scalar is it only takes one number to describe it. And you know, another another example is is energy. And there are, there are lots of examples. One example is energy. Energy is a scalar. Another example of a scalar would be the number of potatoes in a sack of potatoes. Right? If you know what a potato is, I tell you I have a sack with 12 potatoes in it. I only need to tell you one number, right? number of potatoes, right, or the number of anything. So that's fairly nice and simple. Quantities that only take one number to specify. But there are some things that need to be specified by more than one number. So as an example, let's say I'm standing in a room. So if I tell you that I'm standing 12 meters away from this wall, 12 meters from this wall, that's not actually enough information for you to know where I am. So, so maybe, maybe this is 12 meters from this wall. I could be right here, right? I could be right here, but I could also be over here, right? Or maybe, maybe I'm all the way over here. So this is 12 meters here, and this is 12 meters from the wall too. But but you want to know exactly where I am. So to do that, I actually need to give you another number. So maybe if I say, I'm also five meters from the left wall. Well then, if this is five meters and this isn't drawn to scale, five meters is, is less than 12 meters. Maybe we'll make this, we'll make this 15 meters just to make my drawing make a little more sense. 15 meters from the left wall. Well, now if we look at all these positions that are 12 meters from this wall, only one of them also satisfies the condition that is 15 meters from the left wall. So you know that this is where I am. And this isn't the only way I could have done it. Maybe there's a door over here. This is a door I'm looking at from above. If I tell you I'm a certain distance from the door, that tells you something about where I am, but you, you still need a little bit more information, right? Because there are several several points that, that satisfy that. So one other thing I could piece of information I could give you is maybe maybe I give you an angle from this wall, right? So distance from the door, distance from this door, and this angle. What's this? 30-some 30, 30 degrees? About 30 degrees you can tell exactly where I am, right? There's only one point that satisfies both of those those descriptions. So the first way we looked at it was actually like a Cartesian coordinate system where we had a vertical distance and a horizontal distance. So maybe we call them x and y. One value for x and one value of y allowed you to, to specify that one point. And this way with the distance from the door and the angle here, uh, that was that was like polar coordinates. If you've ever seen polar coordinates, where where the two ways or the two numbers given to specify a point are the radius and an angle. 
So, so these are two different ways of describing a vector quantity, right? And there are these two ways, but there are even more ways I could do it. Maybe I'll do one more. You could say that instead of, instead of measuring from the door and giving an angle, maybe I give you two distances. One distance is from this corner. So a distance from this corner, and also a distance from this corner. You can see that, you know, if we trace out all the points that, that are roughly trace out the points that satisfy one of these, and then we trace out the points that satisfy uh, the other requirement, this distance from this corner, we see that there's only one point where those cross, and, and that's where I am. So, so we could do this, and we could think of any crazy way of defining my position in this room. But it'll turn out that we always need two different, two different numbers to specify my position. And things like this that, that need two numbers to be described are called vectors. Or not just two numbers, but, but more than one number. Vectors. So, so here this was a two-dimensional example, right? This is a flat room. But we can imagine, because we live in three dimensions, that maybe there's a height in this room, and I'm closer to the ceiling of the floor. And then I would need a third, I would need a third number to describe where I am in the room. So vectors, they can be 2D, they can be 3D, they can be, you know, four or more dimensions too. But the key thing about vectors is there's more than one number, right? And each number means something specific. So the numbers have to be ordered, right? I, I, I can't mix up these, these two distances here. If I mix up these two distances, I'll end up somewhere else. But anyway, that's, a, uh, I think, a, a pretty good definition of what a vector is. And in the next video, we'll talk a little more about vectors and look at a vector equation.